I would like to uh, invite our professor uh, of College of Business, James Gunderson, who is not only supporting CASA's events, but also Lawrence Uzbek with the NASA every Saturday. And uh, he would like to congratulate you all with Navru's event in Uzbek. Dear Jim, the floor is yours. Hama Yasom, Mene Yasmim Jim, Mien Wyoming University, the Octuche Bolib Ishlaiman. Barchang is ne Navros Bairam Yaranges Balan Tabric Line. Rahmat, Rahmat, Jim, Mien Judaham Hursant, man. You can see the, <laughs> the classes are working. The, he's learned, he was an amazing student who didn't miss any of my classes. Kudos. Rahmat, cut the concerts, Gajdeam Rahmat. Uh, in this uh, now bad, but now we would like to invite our honored guest, Otabek Mahkamov, to present and talk about Navruz and about the Central Asian countries. Dear Otabek, the floor is yours. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this wonderful celebration of Navruz at my favorite American university, which is the University of Wyoming. I'm delighted to join uh, you, uh, to join you in uh, marking uh, this significant holiday, which symbolizes the renewal of uh, springtime. As you know already, because you celebrate this holiday, not the first time, the Navruz uh, word means new day. Also, Navruz marks uh, the first day of spring and is celebrated on the day of astronomical vernal equinox, which usually occurs on 21st of March. It is celebrated as the beginning of the new year by more than 3,000 million people all around the world and has been celebrated for over 3,000 years in Balkans, the Black Sea Basin, the Caucasus, Central Asia, the Middle East, and other regions as well. Navruz plays a significant role in strengthening the ties among people based on mutual respect and the ideals of peace. Dear students, faculty, and community of the University of Wyoming, and all the guests of unforgettable events, may this Navruz bring happiness brightness, prosperity to your home. When Americans ask me from which country am I originally, usually they don't recognize Uzbekistan. And instead of that, they re-ask me, is that Pakistan or Afghanistan? It doesn't happen in Wyoming though. That's why a friend of mine, I'm sure, yeah, you're right. Uh, that's why a friend of mine who studies at Harvard uh, university wrote the special article in one of the newspaper entitled my homeland is not Pakistan. I believe that this geographic confusion is associated with the relatively events in the recent history when one of the largest countries in the world called the Soviet Union has been collapsed in August 1991. Although the size of the former USSR was comparable to the size of North America, including the territories of the United States, Canada, and Mexico. After this collapse, the Soviet Union spawned 15 independent states, among which were the countries of Central Asia, such as Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, and of course, Uzbekistan. The five Central Asian countries are very similar, primarily in terms of the economic situation. They are united not only by the Soviet past and with the ties with Russia. Because I'm from originally from Uzbekistan, I could say just briefly about this wonderful country. Uzbekistan is the treasures of the Great Silk Road, the Azure Mosques of Samarkand and Caravan Sarais of Bukhara. These oldest cities in the world have the same age as Rome and Pompeii. 
Uzbekistan is the motherland of world-renowned scientists, such as Avicenna, who was the most famous and influential philosopher and scientist of the medieval Islamic world. Mirza Ulugbek was an outstanding mathematician, astronomer, educator, and poet of his time. He founded one of the most important observatories of the Middle Ages, and of course, al Khwarezmi. Because of him, in math, we know the terms algorithm and algebra. As I mentioned before, I'm originally from Uzbekistan, and I studied uh, and worked there as a lawyer, and then just something about myself as well. Uh, I became a, an interpreter and then I became a movie actor. Uh, unfortunately, mostly I've played negative roles in all of the Uzbek movies, but in the reality, I'm a very positive, nice, and of course, a very modest person. We believe in that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, later, I uh, became a radio and a TV host, and now I'm a journalist and an interviewer. Uh, currently, I live in New York, where I work on the radio, and also I'm one of the first Uzbek American video bloggers. Uh, just one hour ago, uh, I had such a great honor to meet with the students of your university by Zoom. It was my privilege to perform in front of this incredibly educated audience for the third time. In that case, French writer Voltaire once said, judge a man by his questions rather than his answers. And currently, I am in the process of writing my motivational book about a hundred life changing encounters. And I would like to make one of the first presentation of this book, of course, at the University of Wyoming. Dear ladies and gentlemen, Navruz Mubarak, and thank you very much for attention and about all your patience. Thank you so much, Mr. Otabek. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, for the past three years to our campus, you were in person. I know you met Dr. Brown. He applauds you here as well. Thank and, you. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that Otabek Mahkamov is a radio host uh, in New York. He hosted me and talked very good about our university. I am I'm super thankful for that. And he's a journalist, as he said. He uh, has performed in many, many Uzbek uh, movies. And also, Otebek is not only an actor, but a good friend of mine because we grew up together when we were little in Fergana, Uzbekistan. I appreciate your friendship as well. Thank you so much. Navruz Mubarak. With that, I'd like to continue with uh, our beloved Zamira Salem, who will be performing another beautiful dance. I would like to tell you a couple of words about Zamira. As you know, she has been here as Dr. Anna Alexander for the past seven years. <laughs> she has been dancing and dancing, performing and showing our culture, our traditions. So Zamira Salem is an Uzbek performing arts. She focuses on folk Uzbek dancing, lapar, we call traditional national songs, which is used with doiras, and she will show you a beautiful wedding, part of the wedding today as well. So Zamira Salam graduated with a specialization in a professional dance, as I told you. In 1993, she was awarded the best dancer by dancing to Mukarama uh, Truhumbaeva's uh, song, and uh, she was nominated and she was awarded the best award. We are so thankful to her that she is bringing that culture piece to the United States. She's performing not only our events, but other Uzbek communities. And also she teaches dancing workshops, which she did today and our students really enjoyed. We are thankful to you. Dear Zamira, we are waiting for you. <laughs> Vale, 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 chanita, no, no, vale. 
Let's go dance with me together. that we are hosting today not only from our community and not only from our countries but the guests wonderful remarkable people like Mark Rees. Mark Rees began his 25-year career in Central Asia as a US Peace Corps volunteer in the second group to serve in Uzbekistan in 1994 and 1996. He conducted field work for eight years in Central Asia, supporting and leading activities, including program management as country director for the Department of State Uzbekistan Partnership Program in Comparative Religious Studies. He interpreted and worked as interpreter and consultant for the Department of Defense in the country academic research and scholarly translation. Mark has worked as a site manager for the United States Special Operation Command managing translation and cultural advisement contracts. For the last nine years, he has worked for the United States Naval Academy, holding positions as deputy director for the Center for Middle East and Islamic Studies, founding director for the Center for Regional, uh, Regional Studies. Mark now lives in Nashville, Tennessee, and directs the Mulokot, cultural engagement program. The reason why we wanted to bring him and to acknowledge his work, Mark has graciously donated one of the important book, which is called Bygone Days to the University of Wyoming's library. We are so thankful and appreciate your work. With that, you can see from dancing, we move to the literature and the research. Mark, the floor is yours. Thank you everyone so much. I've, I've been sitting here on a Saturday uh, just really happy. One, the weather is really great in, in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, but I, I started this three-year journey to establish Mulakot about three years ago, and now people like Dilnoz Ahan, Otebek John, Ahor Beck at the embassy, you know, you're all now old friends. 
uh, you know, I, I have to say one of the students is from Phoenix, Arizona. I grew up in Litchfield Park on the outside of Phoenix, pretty much where all the roads came to an end. I guess you could call me a Kishlocksky growing up, you know, out in the Dala, out in the countryside. And I, I joined the Peace Corps, as Delnoza Hohen said, in the early 90s. I was a kid that wanted to get out and go see the world. Uh, I thought I was going to go to Latin America. I thought I was going to go to Africa. They sent me to the former Soviet Central Asian Republic of Uzbekistan, and I've never really looked back. Uh, being one of the members of the second group to go, um, there were no dictionaries. There were no maps. Uh, there were very little in the language of Uzbek language material to learn Uzbek in advance. You, we literally stepped off the plane into a new republic having absolutely no idea where we landed. And it's been a, an incredible privilege, a rare privilege to watch a republic sort of seek to define itself. Uh, but I'll say that at the, after, at the end of Peace Corps, I was in the city of Kolkhan, uh, a conservative city in the Fergana Valley, uh, fell in love with it. Uh, you know, I, I miss it every day. Um, I miss Northern Arizona and Wyoming, Colorado every day as well. And, um, but I, at the end of Peace Corps, I had more questions than answers. And, and, and my career has been built trying to answer the questions of what I understood about the place of family in Uzbek society, the place of Islam within the Uzbek Republic and within Uzbek society all of these different sorts of questions. So I did what any normal Peace Corps volunteer does at the end of their service, they go to graduate school. Uh, I went to the University of Washington uh, with Professor Ilse Sertaldus, um, old school German, uh, tough professor who started us out with Turkic runic script and we made our ways up to the Uzbek language, which was my language of choice. Uyghur was my second language and then Persian my third. Uh, but I still had more questions than answers at the end of uh, at the end of graduate school. September 11th occurred, and I began to work with in, on grants and with military members. And I saw the same questions that they had that Altebeck brought up earlier. You know, uh, everything from really simple geographical questions to what does Uzbekistan represent as a place, as a people, who are the Uzbeks? And so I began translation of uh, Abdullah Qadiri's Ugan Kun Lar, translated into bygone days. It was written in the 1920s by uh, a Jadid, Abdullah Qadiri. The Jadid movement was a Muslim reform movement in the 20th century that sought to define themselves on their own terms, just like a lot of other uh, colonized people across planet Earth at the time in the 20th century. So I'm gonna do a quick screen share uh, just to show you some of the main themes of Ugan Kunlar and why today's uh, Navru celebration is something that could not be taken, taken for granted 74 years ago, not in this way. Uh, so if you bear with me. Um, So people ask me, what, is, what does Ukan Kunlar mean to me? Can you see the screen? Yes, we can. Okay. This is me, uh, much thinner with hair uh, in 1995 in Kokan Han, Hudora Han's Orda. Uh, I don't call it a palace. I don't call it a museum. I call it what it, what it was, was an Orda. Uh, these are some young students who found me walking around in Hudora Han. I spent many months in Hudora Han talking to the man in the center about uh, Uzbek history, Central Asian history. He was a, a genuine Tari Shunasa, a specialist. And a uh, hot day, um, but it was just one of those moments uh, in my youth that really kind of captured my experience in Kokan. So Ukan Kunlar means to me a lifetime voyage to explain my experiences and to come to understand them and to explain them to others. Ukan Kunlar means it's about love and family. It's a classic Turkic Persian tale set within the guidelines of a reformist's vision of what he believes an independent Muslim republic would be in the 20th century. It's about reform and modernity. Uh, if you notice in this picture, 
uh, there's a Russian shirt, a Russian hat, you know, Otebek, uh, the traitor, uh, the main hero of the story, uh, uh, was a traitor on a caravan Sarai, and, and he had seen the world by going to northern Kazakhstan, Shamai, which is, I think, around Semipalatinsk, and all these Oxacol white beards marvel at how he had gone to go see the world. It's about ethnic conflict, economic and political decline. Uh, Utkan Kunlar Bygone Days is largely recognized as the first full length novel in the Uzbek language. And he depicts ethnic conflict between sedentary people and the Kipchaks within the Hudara Han's court. Uh, economic and political decline, uh, the 20th century Turkestan having to deal with an increasingly globalized world and, and, and a young Muslim man's ability to reconcile his place in that world, both Altebek the character and Qadiri the author. Tanish Bilish is a, you know, kind of Kuchatila, kind of a street language in Uzbek. It's kind of an Irish, you and yours, your relatives and friends, you know, um, in, you know, it's a good and a bad thing at the same time. Like you always have somebody within your system that can support you during hard times, but you know, it, it can kind of get in the way of the development of civil society. Uh, Qadiri is brutal about corruption in Turkestan society, uh, but this is all leading up to the conquest of the Russians in 1865. The novel starts in 1845, it ends in 18, just a few years before Russian conquest. And so, you know, Qadiri is saying, looking back, writing about a, a novel about the past to describe his present period of the delineation of borders in 1924 and the, the establishment of the Soviet Union, he's looking back to describe his present period as a warning to future generations that if we do not define ourselves on our own terms, by our own language, by our own heroes, if we do not remember things like Navruz, other people will define it for us. Uh, at the very bottom here, I've got the death of Otebek. I hate to give away the ending of the novel <laughs> before you've read it, but uh, Otebek dies in the end. And, and it kind of leaves you sort of wondering, you know, um, you know, you know, as a novel, you know, uh, what does what does Qadiri say by that? I'll leave that up to the reader to decide what they take from their individual reading of the book. But this, you know, these these pictures I had commissioned by uh, Kamaluddin Mirzaev and Kakraman Shah Islamov in in Tashkent, and this the one on the bottom left hand corner I think is the first Persian miniature depicting Tsarist era troops. Uh, you know, to illustrate the novel. So that's what, that's what Utgan Kunlar means to me, it, what it means to different people. It, it, you will take your own reading from it, but nothing here today can be taken for granted. Uh, remembering Amir Tamur, Navai, uh, with Akhwar Arka the other day when we did the Navai celebration, remembering these writers could not be taken for granted for a very long time in Central Asia. And today we can freely celebrate these things. And, and I have to say that Qadiri would be very happy to see Dilno Zahon, who is a Jadid herself, right? Getting together people of Central Asia, not just Uzbeks, Kazakhs, Kyrgyz, Uyghur Lar, all of this ecumenical world that Qadiri was hoping to try to remember. You know, Qadiri, the main character of the story, Otebek's own father, Yusuf Bek Haji, is constantly speaking Taji throughout the novel. You know, that this, this is a world that, you know, Qadiri was worried in the 1920s would become homogenized. And when I see, you know, the new president of Kyrgyzstan come to talk about border issues in Uzbekistan, uh, when I see Navrus being celebrated among various embassies within DC who all share that same ecumenical world between Istanbul, Brooklyn, you know, China, Russia, all over the world, and that you all share that ecumenical world, I truly believe that you are fulfilling the dream that Qadiri and the Jadids died for in 1938. 
So I really want to congratulate you on this day. Um, don't take it for granted, as you clearly aren't. You know, there's joy in everyone's heart and everyone's smiling and laughing. And I think that that's what Kadiri would have wanted for you all. So congratulations, not just on Navarro's, but for you being you on the terms that you've established for yourself. Thank you. With that, uh, we would like to continue with Zamira Salem's cultural, traditional, yar, yar. Please enjoy. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Hamilaga, Majidam Hursaman, Manabugun, Tilnazahana, Tayar Lagan, Navruz Bayramo, Shun Tayar Lagan, Shu Zoom, Yani, Life or Kali, Tayar Lagan, Kursa to Yajudam Hursaman, Hatnashkan, and then, Vasil Lanman Chakrigan is the name Judeam Hursaman. من شون عید مخشی من که دل نازه خانگه من دل نازه خان بلند جده هم فخر لنمز چیکی من یدی ایل دن بیره دل نازه خانه چخرش لره بویشه شو تکلیف لره بویشه بزا بارب اوز بزا اوزبیکستان فالیکولور مومن بزن ملی بایرام همز شو اونیورسیت ده نیشان لب کلمز من بندن جده هم خورسم من دل نازه خانگه کت دکار رحمت ایتا من شو ویام اینده بزن اوزبیکستان بایرام کوکلر یک کوتاه همیشه از بیکستان حق داد تو دنیا گه از گنا مسیح خسالم خوش بگم اختلاف. اولار با خانه بس خان اولار یه یاردم سپت دایم از مزه ملی اورف عادت در مزه شو آمریکا بویل کشته کل مختم از خاز مانا شو کل نم هر دایمی دیل دام بر دل نازه خان بگن لکل نم گل نازه خان ترانسلیت کلیشیز ممکن Dear, dear friends and our uh, guests, Zamira Salab just uh, thanked the University of Wyoming and me for, you know, hosting her. And also for us, she's honored and she, she was honored to be here. She's proud of us, all of us, and especially that we are bringing our Central Asian flags. And as she said, made a joke, I have been <laughs> on campus for seven years celebrating this holiday and I was the bride. Uh, oh, for seven <laughs> years, <laughs> so I am not breaking that tradition, and and yes. I'm going to wear my. And I tell her, I tell her, I want to do my daughter today, bride. She said, No, 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 I'm not going <laughs> to give my space. <laughs> um, and inshallah, I, inshallah, the Nazar Khanikat those are the two that they am for the holidays. The children's salam are clamors. Let's just learn the hammering is the taklif clamors. Hamila and our rose by the Mabalanchi, Kalbum and Tabrik Lima. Happy holidays to everyone. So, and I'd like to show, my, yeah, from my wedding, um, my sharp scarf that will be performed. And I'm not going to translate what Zamira said, but she wishes me to marry one day and she invites you all to my wedding one day for big Uzbek party. <laughs> and it's gonna be big, Kellen Salom. Thank you, thank you. Happy Christmas. Hi, hi, Ulan. Can I Ulan? Ulan, just yar yar Ulan, just what does that mean? Yor, 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 yor,
Hazır biz kelin yar yarına eğittik. Şimdi kelin salamımızı başlayalım. Merhamet. Bir 
Happy holiday for everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, dear Zamira, for bringing Uzbekistan to the United States, to Wyoming right now. I hope uh, our guests and our panelists are enjoying as if they were in a true mm -hmm. wedding. So you saw the culture, that's a tradition. Every girl who's married in Uzbekistan is so honored to have this stage and to be the star of the stage and saying thank you for every parent, mother-in-law, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, father-in-law, and all people starting from the God. We're so thankful. Thank you, Zamira, for showing this beautiful, beautiful culture. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Um, I'm so sorry that we're a little bit running out of time, uh, but we would like to finish because we have a beautiful show, not much, but still, if you would like to stay, please stay with us. But we really appreciate your time and we respect your time. Um, if you need to leave, you're welcome to leave, but we will continue. And I would like to give the floor to Firuza. Firuzichka. Da. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for making this day joyful, Finroza. Thank you. And we are giving the floor to Zamira's Horazm dance.
Ramira Han. Uh, while she's getting ready, I just wanted to thank all of you for joining our beautiful event today and being part of this remarkable and beautiful event, celebrating, listening, watching, and being here, being cheerful, being happy. And I know that I have colleagues here as well who has been directly working with Central Asian students. Uh, we do have our English Language Center who has been teaching Central Asian students. And then we do have Maria and Jill who were watching, cheering, Marian from the English Language Center who has been teaching graciously our students, helping them. Also, uh, Frederica Sius, who worked with me on an Uzbek project going to actual Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. Also, Mary Burns, who worked uh, with English students helping. I know we have parents, uh, my mentees and parents of my Uzbek language class they are participating. Uh, I really appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for being here. I see uh, not only one or two departments, but Teaching and Learning Center is represented by Jeff. I really appreciate you being here. And uh, my family tuning in, uh, in spite of being 4 a.m. in Uzbekistan right now, watching my aunt Amira and my mom Zulfia, who has been tremendously helping me. I wouldn't be able to do any of those events if she wasn't here for me when I was writing my dissertation. So I really appreciate all of you and especially our panelists. You are our star. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, for being celebrating this day with us. We really appreciate you. And you know how important it is being in Wyoming where we don't have much places to go and eat. And we are so sorry we couldn't serve any Uzbek food, but we hope that we may open a new restaurant of Uzbek food, hopefully coming years where you can come and enjoy and taste uh, Central Asian food as well. So with that, we would like to invite Zamira Salam. Please welcome her beautiful Horaz dance. <laughs> I'm 
And I just wanted to say that Zamira Salem just performed very, uh, our beloved, also well-respected uh, singer, Ortuk Otejanov, who is loved by everyone. He passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, rest, rest in peace. Join us, Jannat Tabolsin. Bas siz nadoyim yodimizda tutamiz. Rahmat katta. Bayram ingiz mubarak bolsin. Navruz mubarak, friends. Go enjoy, eat and drink. Bye. Bye, everyone.